What's up guys, my name is Donovan, welcome back to my channel, and uh, today we're going to be doing a jazz vinyl tag. Um, this one was created by Chris from uh, Tunes of the Man Cave, and um, yeah, I wanted to do this. Um, it's been a while since my last video, you guys have been showing me a lot of love um, over the first couple videos I made, but I wanted to go ahead and start the year off with this video. Um, I think it's a great way to celebrate the past year, celebrate the records that you bought. Um, but it's also a great way to just introduce yourself to the community. Um, I think this is such a super fun activity. It really, at least for me, looking at the prompts that were made, it really just allows me to become closer and develop this connection with my, uh, with my collection. Because sometimes, you know, um, certain records, you know, they get neglected. You know, it's not like you're going to listen to every record every single day. That's just impossible unless you have all the time in the world. But even then, it's kind of hard. And so this challenge has really allowed me to just go through my collection and look through records that either I haven't listened to in a while or uh, rediscover records that I love that I want to continue listening to. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So first things first. Um, oh. Also, to shout out to Chris, thank you so much for making this. Thanks for letting us participate. Um, and yeah, let's go. Um, first question is favorite find of the year. So my favorite find of 2022 is this right here. This is Art Blakey, A Night at Birdland. Um, Art Blakey content with Clifford Brown, Lou Donaldson, Horace Silver, and Carly Russell. Yeah, this is an original um, mono with the frame cover. There you guys can see. Frame cover. Yeah, so this is volume two. And I'll go ahead and show you guys the vinyl. This is probably my best steel, I guess. So yeah, it has the Lexington Ave labels. Deep groove, it has the P, it has the RVG etched, flat edge, or flat rim, whatever you want to call it. No ink, no R, so this is an original. And my favorite part about it is this right here, 998. Um, I usually don't like keeping um, price tags or price stickers on, it just annoys me. But this one doesn't bother me. It's kind of like a reminder of like, you know, where, like, the story behind it. I don't think I'll ever sell this, even if I find a, a better copy. I think I'll always keep it, only because, like, the sentimental value. Um, you know, uh, this is one of the first finds I found in the summer. I moved back home after college, like, my first year. Moved back home for the summer. And um, after, like, the first week or so, I went, and uh, I went ahead and just hit a local record store that I haven't been to in over, I think, two years. And, um, yeah, this was a killer find. This is the first thing I found from them. And, yeah, it's amazing. Um, cannot be more happy with this. Um, also, Clifford Brown. Um, don't see a lot of Clif uh, Clifford Brown records or records featuring him. So, you know, it's great having that. Uh, number two is first jazz record you fell in love with. So the first jazz record I fell in love with was probably this one right here. This is uh, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers Monin Blue Note 4003 or 4003, so early 4000 series. This is a, I think, first or second stereo press. Um, yeah, this was a birthday present for me last year. I had the... Uh, classics reissue and i played that to death but deep down i always wanted a mono or like an original or like an early press and so i settled with this one paid about 50 bucks for it so not too bad um this is sort of like a every once in a while I'll play but i do play the classic series ones a lot the classic series reissue a lot um this is just a great album when i have new gear or when i you know um change like um components in my system i test with this album um either the classic series or this one 
only because you know I know that I know this album from front to back. It's my favorite album. It's my favorite jazz album, really. Um, this album got me into jazz. It got me into Blue Note. It got me into Lee Morgan. Got me into Art Blakey, Benny Golson. It just really kind of broadened my taste, and it just really opened this world for me, uh, which is jazz. And so, yeah, I am forever grateful. There's a video online of, um, cause I think, what was it? Uh, they ended up touring Europe, I think, in the early 60s. I think it was like 60 or like, yeah, I think it was like 1960, I think, or 61, I can't remember. And uh, they um, performed live and they performed the title track, the opening title track, which is Moan and, and Lee Morgan goes insane. So if you go ahead, find it on YouTube, go ahead and watch it. It's crazy, it's like a nine, I think it's like an eight minute video or so. But yeah, um, so number three is most far out jazz record in my collection. So uh, the record I'm going to be talking about, I don't have right now because I actually gave it to um, my friend Ryan. So Ryan is also known as a man in his music on Instagram, on YouTube. He is an amazing, amazing dude, really knowledgeable, I think, um, between the two of us, definitely he is, his knowledge for jazz is just light years ahead of like anyone our age. He's just, I think when it comes to him, he's very, he's a historian. Um, he loves the history behind music. He is just so knowledgeable about like, not even just, just the music. It's about everything about it. The session, um, you know, everything in the background that's besides the music. He's just super knowledgeable. And so, um, yeah, shout out to Ryan. But anyways, I went ahead and we did a BCLT. So we kind of swapped some records. So he had some Riverside titles that he didn't have covers for. So we ended up trading or he ended up just sending it to me. And uh, I ended up sending him a lot, like a good amount of like, um, like a few, um, the contemporary records um, here in the West Coast. It's definitely more plentiful than, you know, where he lives, which is the East Coast. And so, yeah, I wanted to send him some stuff. And then one of the records I sent was this album. It was a, um, a free jazz album, Music for People, Birds, uh, what is it? Butterflies and Mosquitoes um, by the Jimmy Jufri Trio. Uh, it's on Choice Records, came out early 70s. Really, really good. I think in my opinion, I like it a lot. It's free jazz is difficult for me to get into really it's just i don't know it's really hard i like the sun raw stuff and the pharaoh sanders stuff you know that's kind of more far out like the more avant-garde like free jazz stuff but some of the coltrane stuff is really hard for me to it's really hard for me to get into i think chris mentioned i think he used ascension for this one and i just can't get into ascension it's just it, it's really hard for me and i love coltrane i think he's top three jazz artists of all time you know it's really just between him and miles really but i would be inclined to say i like coltrane a little bit more but yeah i just i can't get into that album it's just and it's not like it's a bad album it's just like i feel like i don't understand it i can't get into it and so maybe i'm just not musically mature i think that's i, I can't really put it in different other like another way but for me personally i just can't get into that album for me it's just a lot of noise and I it, it's very unfair for me to say that because I know that there is a deeper meaning in like with it than just noise um but you know I just can't get into it but yeah that's the free jazz album that I picked um or that's the most far out jazz album that jazz record in my collection or it was my collection but uh, Ryan, if you're watching this, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I hope you also enjoy a lot of the West Coast like contemporary records I sent you. Um, I'm going to send you more stuff. Don't worry about it. So yeah, uh, that was number three. So number four is a record from a lesser known jazz label. So um, this right here is uh, Ruby Breath Swings. This is a tenage on Bethlehem. Uh, Bethlehem is a, you know, a lot of early... Um, you know, vocal jazz, vocal pop artists, um, 
you know, singers, they started out on Bethlehem, like um, Chris Connor, uh, Nina Simone, I believe Johnny Hartman was also, he also started out on um, Bethlehem. But um, yeah, this is a killer, killer cover. Yeah, amazing cover. I love the typography. Obviously, it's a Burt Goldblatt cover, so um, shout out to Wicked Brown Jazz. Um, if you know, you know, but shout out to him. He definitely appreciates this sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, great album. This is a 10 inch actually. So I bought this locally at a record store. They had a bunch of 10 inches and um, they had some Chet Baker stuff, um, some Lee Konitz, just, yeah, like that type of stuff. Um, but they also had this and this is one I've been looking for a while now. And, um, yeah, killer music. Um, I believe Walter Page is on here as well on bass. So that's pretty cool. But, um, yeah, if you're into, if you want to get into 10, 10 inches, go ahead and, um, pick this one up. This is a great album. Um, it's not going to break the bank. It's, you know, it's relatively affordable if you can find it. You just gotta find it. It's really hard to find an original that. You can really find the, um, the reissues, but it's just hard. Um, okay, number five, an artist only released as a session leader. So this one was a really cool one. Um, I thought it, it's definitely more creative and it actually requires you to sift through your collection and see. And uh, I stumbled upon this one. So this album I actually listened to a lot. And one that I realized that this is the only, um, session where Hiroshi Suzuki, which is um, the man on the cover, he is a jazz trombonist. This is the only session he had as a leader. Um, if you guys don't know, Hiroshi Suzuki is a jazz trombonist from Japan. Excuse me. He moved to America to join Buddy Rich and um, he wanted to, he was going to join Buddy Rich's um, band. But um, yeah, but in the in the 70s, in the early 70s, he went back to Japan to record this album for Columbia. I think that, yeah, it was for Columbia. And um, commercially, it just wasn't doing that well, you know? Obviously, um, definitely more fusion, funky, I would say. But this is an album that has been popular as of late, the past 10 years or so. I know Columbia did a reissue of this. And yeah people went crazy for it and then uh this is actually a reissue from a label called we release whatever the fuck we want it's an it's a reissue label in the eu if i'm not mistaken or is it a denmark i can't remember where this this label is located from or based out of but a lot of their jazz albums they release some really good j jazz so if you're into japanese jazz jeff, definitely check them out um uh their jazz titles are under the label we release jazz so it's kind of like a subsidiary, as like you know, but um, yeah, this is an uh, a reissue. It's a half speed master. This is definitely one of the best sounding records in my collection. The fidelity on all the reissues sound amazing. Um, I think it's cool because they also do. They also release like test pressings of this, and they also release like um, like half speed masterings. They do like forty five. I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, this is an amazing album. Highly recommend you getting this. An original is crazy hard to find. You're not gonna find it. Um, like I said, it wasn't a commercially successful album in the first place, so finding copies are just gonna be impossible. And if you do find it, expect to pay 1000 1500 plus, I'm pretty sure. I don't know how much they go for now, but I definitely know it's an expensive record. But uh, anyways, um, a major artist release on a smaller label. So we mentioned Lee Morgan earlier. This is another Lee Morgan. Well, this is a Lee Morgan album. It's a Here's Lee Morgan. This is a recent pickup. It's on uh, VJ. Um, VJ is just one of those labels that not a lot of people um, buy. Um, you know, the more notable jazz albums are um, this one and the other title Lee Morgan did as well as the Win Kelly titles. And then I think right now the most desirable are probably uh, the Wayne Shorter titles. Um, rest in peace, Wayne Shorter. There's his debut album of his on VJ, and then there's also um, Waning Moments. 
So those two are the more desirable ones. Um, but yeah, those, those are probably the most expensive ones right now. But, um, you know, nowadays they kind of go for more money. I do know like back like a year ago or so, those would go for like 60 bucks VG plus. Now it's kind of hard, but yeah, but this is a killer album though. Art Blakey on the drums, Wynn Kelly on piano, Cliff Jordan on tenor. Paul Jambers on bass, and then obviously Lee Morgan on the trumpet. Um, that's a killer lineup. Um, if this was on Blue Note, this would be five times the price. So go ahead and get these titles on VJ while you can. Uh, I bought that one from a Japanese seller for like 30 bucks, and then it was like 10 bucks shipping, I think. Um, but yeah, anyways. Um, a, uh, number seven is a favorite early morning jazz album. So a favorite of mine is uh, this one right here. This is a new wave by Dizzy Gillespie. Um, this is sort of like a bossa nova type album. Um, you know, Dizzy's great on this album. You know, he's killing it even after you know his bebop days. But yeah, this is great. Would highly recommend this. Super underrated album. Um, shout out to Aiden Buck from Bucks Records. I know he posted this on his YouTube. And I started streaming it, and yeah, it was killer. This is uh, original stereo, um, super clean. I got it for cheap too, you know, for like fifteen bucks or something like that. Um, not a crazy expensive record. Um, so get it while you can, please get this album in your life. It's an amazing album. Great for that early morning. Uh, I'm not really a morning person, but. If I do listen to music in the morning, that's one I would listen to. Um, let's see, a favorite late night jazz album. So this one is um, gonna be John Coltrane Ballad um, with uh, McCoy Tyner, Jimmy Garrison, and then Elvin Jones. Um, this is the acoustic sounds ratio. Um, this one for me is very important. Um, musically, it's great, I love it. Is it Coltrane's best album? No, but is it my fav one of my favorites? Yes. Um, it's just one of those albums where it's like, when I first started collecting vinyl, I didn't have a lot of money. Um, still don't, you know, I'm a college student now, so I guess now I'm actually paying for school. But um, yeah, back then I wasn't working that much. And so I was in high school and I was a young kid. And anytime I spent money on vinyl, it was a big deal. And especially for those, those are like 30 bucks. Um, those reissues are expensive. Um, we're not expensive, but it's just a little bit pricier. Um, but I think it's fair. I think the pricings are fair. I feel like everyone should get them. But, um, yeah. Excuse me. A sip of water. But, um, yeah. Their, the acoustic sound reissues are great. Um, but that album in particular is one I played a lot. Um, I, you know, I didn't have that many records when I first started out. So the records I did have, I played them a lot and I cherish them. Um, and you know, even though now I have a big collection, it's really nice to just remember where I came from and just to cherish the records I do have. Um, but yeah, that is my favorite late night jazz album. Super intimate. I think that one and then the Coltrane Ellington album is just amazing. Um, just great for late night. If you have friends over, if you have a special someone over, I think it's a very sexy, very intimate album. And I think it's just an amazing, amazing session in general. Um, but yeah, number nine, a jazz album that inspires you. So this one right here is one that inspires me a lot. Um, this is Nina Simone, Wild as the Wind. Nina is just, what can I say? Um, powerful woman, activist, you know, this album has some political undertones, I would say, um, in the track for women, you know, she talks about like you know, stereotypes that, you know, towards women in society and you know, not even just being a woman, but a woman of color back then, she's really pushing the boundaries and all those social norms that society has placed on her as a woman of color. And I think it's great because it kind of inspires me to, you know, socially and culturally, it inspires me to just 
push my boundaries, get out of my comfort zone, push this, like question the status quo, you know, strive for greatness. And yeah, but you know, for in relation to vinyl and uh, the hobby, this is an album I found for five bucks or no, like three bucks at Goodwill. Again, another record that I found early on. And it's just nice to, it's a great reminder to be grateful to, for what I have and also to um, never stop looking records you'll never know where you'll find them you know you don't have to always buy on ebay or discogs you can go to, to a thrift store you can go to um flea markets um you know record stores go dig dig for these records because you know they're just sitting there no one's buying them so you might as well just take them home and purchase them and give them a good home anyways uh last album is a jazz album with great music but with a boring cover um i think i'm gonna get a lot of hate for this but i'm just gonna go out and say it this is right this right here is the pole winners uh this is uh barney kessel shelly man and uh ray brown um again another album i found early on in my collecting but this is an original mono on a contemporary great album um, now the cover, it's, it's not a boring cover, I would say, it's just a very forgetful one. If you're not a jazz fan, or you're just in a, let's say thrift store, like I said earlier, and you're in a thrift store and you see this record, and you don't know what contemporary is, or you don't know it's like worth money or something like that, you would probably think this is just a random like gypsy, like gypsy, or um, random like polka album, I don't know, it's just, it's just random, it's just like three dudes. Um, and when you think of pole winners, you don't really think of like, you know, jazz, you think of like, I don't know, like pop music, like the Kingston Trio. That's kind of what I'm thinking of when I look at this. And no knock to them. They, you know, they look, they're having like a good time, but um, I don't know what the hell this is. It's like the Bay Area or something or like LA. I'm assuming because it's contemporary, so it's like West Coast. But yeah, I feel like if they had a cooler cover, um this album will be up there. But I mean, again, it's one of my favorite contemporary albums. I love contemporary records. Um, this album in particular has been sampled a lot recently in the past couple years um, through like lo-fi, hip hop, you know, R&B and like electronic artists. Um, this has been up there, but yeah. Um, but amazing album. I love Barney Kessel. Barney Kessel's amazing. Shelly Mann and Ray Brown. Shelly Mann is really like the face of um, contemporary records. I feel like he is the contemporary records version of like Jimmy Smith. That's kind of what I, that's kind of what I'm, my comparison is. But yeah, so um, those are the 10 records for the vinyl tag. Um, again, shout out to Chris for creating this. Um, go ahead and check out his channel. Shout out to Ryan for being a great friend and sending me records and being someone I can talk to uh, on a regular basis. You know, him and I text almost every day. Um, and it's kind of crazy because, you know, I don't, I've never met him in real life, but I feel like, you know, we're great friends. Um, and I guess this, that's what this whole community is about. Um, that's the whole point about making these vinyl tag videos just to get in the community and meet more people and i'm forever grateful that i did that because now i know so many people who listen to jazz it's great it's fun you know not all people i know listen to jazz so it's great having people who share your hobbies so yeah thanks again for watching um i'll go ahead and put the prompts in the description of the video so you guys can go ahead and follow i don't think Chris posted them I kind of just I kind of just guessed them and I'm pretty sure I got them correct but um yeah I'll go ahead and put them in the description for you guys um go ahead and check out Ryan's channel he posted a vinyl tag he beat me to it so um yeah so he was the first person besides Chris to post it so yeah thanks Ryan but um yeah thank you so much for watching um I hope you guys enjoyed and I can't wait to see your submissions as well. So go ahead and tag me in the videos that you guys make. I really want to see your videos. Um, so yeah, thanks again. You guys have a good one.